Welcome to a hands-on Azure Data Studio video tutorial. My name's Alex, and I'll be your video guide throughout this book. This tutorial is all about snippets. I'm going to show you how to use them, how to create your own, and how to make them parameter-driven so they're more functional. By the end of the video, you'll see how snippets provide a very nice custom editing feature within Azure Data Studio. Let's get hands-on. To use a snippet, open up an editor window and start typing. For example, if I wanted to invoke a snippet to create a table, there is a snippet by that name. To do this, start by typing create and you'll see the SQL create table snippet appear in the drop down menu. We now have a template that can be used to create a table. Notice the cursor is blinking in four places. This is because the first parameter that we are entering exists in four places. This includes any comments or code segments where the parameter is used. This is a handy feature of snippets, which are just like templates, allowing you to update multiple instances at the same parameter by reusing the same variable name, which we'll look at more closely in just a minute. For example, let's say I wanted to create a customer table using this snippet. So I'll just type in customer. Notice it changed in four different locations. To get to the next parameter value, we'll hit tab, and now it's highlighting the four instances of the schema, which we're just going to leave as DBO. Hit tab again, and now we're on the ID. And again, we'll leave it the same. Tab down to column name two and type name for the customer's name, and hit tab once more to column name three, where we'll type address. You can add additional columns, but for demonstration purposes, we're going to stick with two. So let's run this script, and after refreshing our tables folder, our table will appear. You can also create your own snippets. I've started a snippet right here, which is a simple selective information schema columns view, where the column name is plan name. As we run this, you can see there's three instances of that particular column in the MSDB database on SQL Server. But if we want to make this more of a generic query, then we can say, well, we're just going to use the context of the current database. Notice the $1 is the first parameter, and you can also repeat $1 if you need the same value placed in several locations within this query. So, this is the syntax we would use, and what we would do at this point is place this into our custom user snippet repository, which is associated with the user account that you are using with Azure Data Studio. To access the location where the snippet is placed, hit F1 and then start typing snippet and you'll see the configure user snippets preference appear in the dropdown. If you select that option, you'll notice that there are several files that hold snippets specific to a given language. In this case, we want to alter the SQL.json snippet file, so we'll select that. This file contains multiple snippets already. But what we're going to do is add a single snippet to this file. We'll do this by selecting the last snippet, starting from the last comma to the second to last curly brace, copying it to our clipboard and pasting it in. Now we have a new template to work from for our new snippet. The first thing we need to provide is the snippet name. In this case, it's information schema for columns. So we'll input that for the name. Next is the prefix. The prefix is what will actually pop up based on what you type in the query window in Azure Data Studio. So you'll want to make sure it's specific to what you're doing. This particular snippet gives us details on info schema column, so that's what we'll name it. Moving on, we see a description section, which is actually optional. So we can choose if we want to keep it or not, but we do need the body as this is the snippet itself. So, we'll go back and copy that particular query, then paste it into the body section. We'll double check everything to make sure it's correct, then save it with Control S. To make sure it worked, we'll start fresh in our query window and start typing info schema columns, and it now shows up in our drop down window. Select it, and we can see it now highlights the column name, which is actually our configured parameter. In this case, it will run in the context of my current database. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to switch to a larger database. Next, I'll type in the column name I'm looking for and run it. Now we can see several tables pop up that happen to use that particular column name that we're searching for. 